Hello YouTube, this is Morgan, Airspeed Prime here with my next Attack on Titan Season 3 episode review. This one's going to be for Season 3 Episode 4, which is called Trust. And uh, I thought this was... I don't think it was a weak episode, but it was probably the weakest of the season so far. Um, it was just one of those episodes that sort of played its role. It's it. This kind of is roughly what needed to happen in this episode, but the actual events that took place within it weren't massively like uh, super interesting. I think obviously they're building towards bigger stuff with like the the tease of Commander Irwin about to be executed right at the end. But the rest of the episode was just kind of small little kind of, you know, moving things along, getting things into position before and then bigger things happen. Um, and I, I think the biggest example of that is just that in a way like Flygel Reeves is like <laughs> the, 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 the notable part of this episode is the stuff with him. And, you know, it serves its purpose in that that whole situation of Hanji saving him convincing him to sort of side with the scouting legion about the truth of what happened to his father and him sort of getting the interior police to admit that they've been scheming in the background and um, that more or less the the whole idea of the media trying to frame the scouting legion for what happened uh, this whole little community here actually knows about that and the scouts are beginning to get people on their side and you can see roughly how they're going to go about doing this big turn once they try to reveal Historia to everyone as the real queen um, but you know it, it just served that that purpose of like it was it was actually a nice moment for Flygel Reeves as a character who kind of just came across as just a bit of a random non-event of a character but they seem to actually give him a a nice moment here of just saying he's like terrified but here's his moment to stand up and kind of do the thing that his father did and that they tried to make uh, his father into somewhat of a honorable character by the end and here's his son kind of trying to continue that on and um, it was a sort of a similar story i think with the whole um they get the two military police officers the the cadets uh, marlo and uh he is it heigl I, I can't remember the, the the girl's name but the two of them and try to well obviously they capture them because they're searching for the scouts but um they basically tried to see if they can trust them and uh john is the one to actually do the interrogation to a degree and find out that they are actually trustworthy marlo especially is the one who seems to get what the scouts actually do and uh understands them uh the girl seemed to know annie to a certain point which was uh somewhat interesting plot point and basically just presenting the idea that they don't know like it's not public knowledge of course about the whole titan shifter stuff for the most part so they don't actually know that it was annie who was the one who did the whole stuff in the stahes sohes district and um, and it, it's just getting this idea that the government who's in charge now are completely in control of what information actually gets out and notable things that even a large amount of people saw are being covered up, including the whole Titan Shifters stuff, and now the true king and so on is being covered up. Plus, trying to hide the nature of like how the walls formed in the first place, and that it's kind of becoming obvious in a way that you know they just want to keep the walls, the secret of the walls, the way they are, so that people won't want to leave. Uh, because if people leave, of course, it basically it basically takes away the power that the actual like leadership of the whole community within the walls has if people actually just decide to leave and give up on the whole walled structure. Um, so as I said, I think there's overall some nice kind of themes and ideas at play within this arc. Um, the only problem with this episode, I think, was just that uh, it didn't have the, the impact of some of the other scenes in previous episodes. Um, there was the reveal that uh, Kenny is actually Kenny, Kenny Ackerman, uh, and Mikasa seemed to react to this. Um, and like, is is it Levi Ackerman as well? Like, there, there there was some reveal I think in one of the previous episodes about that of just that because like Levi is in, involved there somehow that they all have some sort of a relation through name in some way. Now, they've obviously said before that the whole like. 
I don't know that the I don't know if they specifically made a thing of just the Ackerman line or just the fact that Mikasa is actually Asian and that's kind of a notable thing within the, the Attack on Titan universe, or if it's actually the Ackerman name that means anything. They probably haven't actually. They'll probably make a deal in the in upcoming episodes about what the name specifically means, but um, we'll see how how they go about doing that because they sort of made a point of like Mikasa and Levi kind of interacting a little bit more, him kind of holding her back, but maybe this reveal and the kind of connections between all that might come out now. Um, because obviously it, it is somewhat of a mystery, uh, I suppose, about Mikasa's backstory, about the whole idea of like, she seems to be one of the only like remaining characters alive who actually is Asian and there's something special about them. Uh, at least, if, at least I, I think I'm remembering that correctly for the first season, if it was either the fact that she's Asian or the name, I, I can't remember specifically. Um, so that, that was just random little piece of information that they uh, revealed in this episode that Levi didn't actually know that that was Kenny's full name, kind of pointing at the fact that that's how cautious Kenny is, that he, even if he, someone he basically helped to raise, he didn't reveal all of the information to. And there's stuff that obviously he hasn't told those people, even though he has told them his name and so on. So, setting, setting Kenny up a little bit more, um, and the whole idea again that they're they're keeping it secret from basically the public, that the Interior Police's um, fancy maneuver gear is built to kill scouts primarily, and it's got nothing to do with Titans, um, which obviously wouldn't look particularly well. That they have gear that's basically built to just enforce and kill people. Um, so all that stuff's being set up quite well. Um, Erwin is obviously being br is brought before the king right at the end, and he has some sort of a plan going on. Uh, he told Commander Pixis to do something, um, and he he believes that something that is said or something that the commander actually reveals at some point is going to ask everyone to make a big choice. So. I assume Erwin isn't going to be killed or be executed, so something's going to happen to stop or get in the way of his execution, and that's going to be very interesting to see how that happens. Um, I assume it's going to have to be some sort of a big public victory that the government is not going to be able to like just cover up. I don't know if it will be the full-on reveal of like everything is a lie, but they're going to probably, I think, have to reveal that something is a lie and that the, the scouts are being framed for a lot of what's happening here. I think that's the way they'll probably go about it. Um, beyond that, uh, is there anything else to cover in the episode? Um, I don't really think so. Again, like, uh, Aaron is the main character, but we, he's, he's just, like, a kidnapped at the moment and not... It's just the other characters trying to get him back, so it's kind of weird that our main character is, like, very much out of action and... It feels like, in a way, the series, like, it doesn't necessarily, like, have a main character at this point in time. It's just, like, because, like, the other, like, technically main cast is, like, Armin, Mikasa, they're on Levi's team. So it sort of feels like Levi is almost, like, the main character, given that he's the one who's the biggest enemy of, um, Kenny. Uh, and in, he's the, he's the one, like, leading the main kind of, uh, force against everything that's going on here so it feels like Hanji, Levi and Erwin are like the main characters more so than I suppose the characters that we actually met initially in the first season so it's just kind of showing you how uh, odd in a way the format of this show is but that it's still working even if it has to switch the focus for away from the characters we actually know um, but I assume uh, Aaron will come back into focus at some point because there's the whole setup of he's going to be eaten and that's going to like transfer his Titan powers to someone else in some way and we'll get some sort of reveals I assume. So uh, yeah, I think that's basically everything I wanted to say in this video about the episode. Um, as I said at the start, it, it's a fine episode. I don't think it was particularly amazing. It just was... A, an episode that played the role it needed to play and I think there's nothing really more to say about it other than that it was just you know a perfectly fine episode of Attack on Titan so yeah I'm excited for next week's episode to see just what they do after the cliffhanger but uh, 
yeah, I think that's everything I wanted to say. So in the comments, let me know what your thoughts are on this episode as well as what I had to say about it. But uh, yeah, that's been the video. Thanks for watching and bye.